Hello and welcome to IS Primers. Now in today's session, we are going to cover a very important technology that is metal air battery. And likewise, we are going to cover the aluminium air battery. Now this is quite significant when we talk about the government's focus towards e-mobility or in simple words, electric vehicles. So the government plans that this country should transition to EVs by 2030. But the biggest challenge to this is the availability of the lithium ion batteries. Now the lithium ion batteries is the biggest concern because the lithium that is the main constituent of this battery is very very expensive and it is available in short quantities. So it is a rare earth metal and it is largely controlled by China. So naturally this is against India's strategic interest also and if India wants to focus on moving all its vehicles to the e-platform, electronic platform, then in that case it will need something more than that, lithium. Lithium is available in scarce quantities. So there is a search going on for alternative ways of storing electricity and it is not very difficult for you to guess seeing the title that we are talking about the aluminium air battery. So aluminium air battery has emerged as a major technological innovation in this field. There is an Israel based company known as Finergy which has developed a version of this battery and this has been quite successful and thereby uh, India's Indian oil company and Finergy are taking up a deal. Basically this Finergy company will provide it's the technology of aluminium air battery. And this Finergy company has also taken deals with India's automobile manufacturers, most notably Maruti and Ashok Leyland. And the thing is basically the supply of aluminium air battery. And these companies, it will take once this pro pro project is, you know, on, the, on its way, then it is going to take them about one year of trial before it eventually hits to the marketplace. Now it is important to know the mechanism of aluminium air battery. Aluminium air battery, when we say it is based on aluminium, aluminium is the key mineral over here and this battery requires an electrolyte. Electrolyte is a medium where which the reaction will take place. And lastly, the most important component is air, air cathode. So aluminium acts as the anode, so it is negatively charged and cathode is positive. Now in this what happens is, atmospheric oxygen is drawn in the cell, atmospheric, uh, so basically from normal air, oxygen is taken up through a membrane and it reacts with aluminium. This electrolyte could be most popular electrolyte in this case is sodium hydroxide. So a reaction takes place or oxidation of aluminium takes place and we get aluminium hydroxide and there is a release of electrons. So there is a release of electrons to the air cathode. So this leads to the formation or this leads to the creation of electric current in the battery which is eventually supplied to the car. So this was the mechanism or the working of the aluminium air battery. Now as you can see over here I said that the aluminium is you know we get a hydroxide aluminium hydroxide as a result. The aluminium is consumed in this process. So these batteries are cannot be recharged. The lithium ion batteries can be recharged but the aluminium battery cannot be recharged. So this is one major drawback in this technology. But then the benefits far outweigh the, this shortcoming. So let us see the benefits of the aluminium air battery. So the benefits are first in India's case it is a, aluminium is readily available av available in, in the sense that uh, its main ore is bauxite and India is very rich in the bauxite ores especially on the eastern part of India where most of the mines are available. 
so bauxite is available and aluminium by any way it is one of the most abundant metals on the, in the world so availability of the bauxite addresses our two major concerns over here and then this has high energy density high energy density means that these batteries can store huge amount of current to give you a comparative figure over here uh, have you heard about the tata nexon of course you must have and tata nexon has its own ev so this ev range is 250 kilometers right but in the case of uh, you know in the case of this batteries the range could be as much as 1000 plus kilometers in many us based articles it is written as 1000 miles so if i put it it is 1600 kilometers 1600 kilometers of one time go so after that the battery will have to be changed but this one has a range of only 250 kilometers okay now i said high energy density it also means that per weight of the battery you know per unit weight the charge held by the battery is much more so the only example that i could get in this re reference was the example of a very famous toyota car which is known as nissan leaf in india it is not very popular that's why i told you about nexon so nissan leaf is also like nexon only so this nissan leaf uh, the weight of the battery is 270 kilograms and the range is 250 kilometers obviously it can be recycled battery can be recharged easily but in the case of aluminium battery aluminium air a 90 kg battery can give a charge for 1000 plus kilometers so all the figures that i mentioned 1000 plus kilometers or 1600 kilometers it is for the 90 kg battery so you can see for the amount of weight it carries much much more charge so 1000 kilometers is what a person maybe a normal person would be consuming in one you know one month or maybe half a month so it can be recycled one can go to the petrol pump or any agency and get this changed swapped battery can be swapped so, so that is one of the key constituents of the aluminium air battery so this battery is naturally lightweight and one of the reason of this battery being lightweight is that this battery has air cathode so the oxygen that is being consumed it is not part of the battery it is being taken from the atmosphere so this allows the battery should to be lighter in weight and therefore much more compact and in the automobile sector the compactness is very very critical because it is the thing the battery has to be stored into the cars and i said earlier also that this battery has to be swapped like a normal battery also you must have seen right the normal lead acid batteries that are there in the cars so they're just taken out take placed and then it is connected with some connectors so the same can be done in these cars and given the fact that it is smaller it can be placed anywhere in the car and further there are other advantages when it comes to the aluminium air battery and you can take this as certain drawbacks that i mentioned about the lithium ion battery so the aluminium air battery is far safer as compared to the lithium ion battery lithium as a metal is highly reactive in fact when i talk about the aluminium air battery also so in this case any metal could have been used remember the title is metal air battery so any metal could have been used including lithium it could be manganese magnesium uh, uh, zinc etc lithium air battery in fact has the highest amount of energy density but the problem is that lithium is highly reactive and therefore very difficult to manage and even when we use these lithium ion batteries all of us right laptops mobile phones everything has lithium ion these batteries have a case of explosions taking place most of us would not have experienced it but then on news there have been cases where explosions have taken place there are concerns about the heating also heating may taking place or un unwarranted battery drain taking place especially on a hot summer day mobile phones we would have seen uh, or a laptops when the temperature is more 
like in India's case, the temperature is high. So the battery of the laptop will drain much faster. So aluminum air battery is able to address these concerns. In fact, the casing of the aluminum air battery is far safer. It's only aluminum first that is being consumed and it is a highly stable metal. Electrolyte is quite normal sodium hydroxide and the other thing is air which is taken from the atmosphere. So it's, it is far safer when we talk as compared to the lithium ion and the lithium ion battery is holding charge, we charge the battery. But in this case aluminum air battery we are basically this is a source of energy where we use oxygen from the atmosphere to cause a reaction and that creates electricity. So electricity is not stored in the battery but rather a reaction takes place so chemical energy is converted into electrical energy and this it is for this reason that this battery is also called as fuel cell based battery. And since it does not hold any charge, like lithium ion battery, it cannot be short circuited. And lithium ion battery has environmental concerns. From the point of mining, you know, mining for lithium to the disposal, to disposal of the lithium, the, there are environmental concerns. In fact, the lithium ion battery is recycl recyclable, that is for sure. But there is a shelf life to it. After a period of time, the life of the battery or the charge that the battery holds is going to come down. So you must have seen with your phones also, every one after one year, your battery life of the phone keeps decreasing gradually. So the same is the case with lithium ion. And you can imagine if you're traveling by car, if you're traveling with a lithium ion battery and the range keeps getting reduced, so there is going to be a concern of range anxiety. So there is fear is going to be there that you are not you will not be able to reach a destination. So there are environmental concerns uh, over here and also there is this concern of the longevity of the battery. So coming back to the environmental concerns, the mining. So when mining takes place, mining anywhere, it is not environment friendly and that is true for aluminium also. But when it comes to the mining for lithium ion, very very small amount of lithium would be available from the ore when mining takes place. So huge amount of displacement takes place for getting the land, the forest is destroyed, then pollution takes place and we get small amount of lithium. So small amount of lithium is there and then disposal is also a con concern. In fact, very little amount of lithium, lithium from the lithium ion battery is actually recycled. So as per a not-for-profit organization, uh, People for Earth, they say that less than 5% of the lithium ion that is being used, less than 5% is actually recycled. But when we talk about the aluminium, aluminium is 100%, it can be recycled. In fact, there is a very famous electronic company, Apple. So they say that their aluminium, the most of the casing that they use in their making of the laptops, it is recycled aluminium. So 100% of it can be recycled. We have the technology, we have the know-how. So it is much easier to recycle. And in fact, it is very cost effective also. So as per a study, they say if aluminium is recycled, if recycled aluminium is used as an anode, then in that case, the price would be as low as US dollar 1.1 per kg. So that is how much, I mean, if you multiply it by 70, right, 77 or let's say 80, 90, 80 rupees, 80 rupees per kg. And we need how much? 90. So 90 into uh, 80, 70, 200 plus electrolyte and to travel about 1600 kilometers with that. So it's a good deal. Plus it is not causing the pollution of the petrol and the diesel cars. Disposal is much simpler as if we compare it with lithium ion. So it has lot of advantages when we talk about the aluminum air kind of battery. Now coming to some of the concerns with this technology. So as I said earlier also, it is not rechargeable. 
and therefore we will have to create an infrastructure of batteries like recyclable thing is very easy you just plug and play you plug the battery start working on the car and that's done but when it comes to the replacing of the battery it is always inconvenient and then we will have to create a network a thorough network across the country where these batteries are easily available so that will have to be done so the logistics is complicated but think about it uh, we have we have been already been using batteries in a car we have this lead acid batteries so that infra is already there it is only a matter of adopting it so it's not a very serious issue especially given the facts that we covered here second but the more critical one over here is that there is still this technology is not fully evolved or matured so there is a problem with the functioning of the air cathode the air cathode is the thing that takes the atmospheric air gets the oxygen and the reaction takes place so one concern is that this air cathode is not very efficient when it comes to reduction of oxygen there is reduction of oxygen and there is oxidation of aluminium basic chemistry don't have to confuse you can just yeah so reduction there is not very efficient over there and sometimes other gases up, uh, alongside oxygen also infiltrate into the system and the matter of concern is when carbon dioxide gets into it so this has a problem of creating it, it has a problem of spoiling the battery so there is also a case of sludge formation taking place around the anode so this affects the functioning as well as the efficacy of this battery and lastly this battery hasn't this technology hasn't yet attracted adequate investments for any technology to be feasible right there is a the problem over here but for any technology to be feasible it needs lot of research and development it it needs lot of scaling up of operations from prototype to making it a mass market product so lot of investments are requ required and then only the product will be deemed safe and usable for the end consumer but till now this technology hasn't drawn as much investment as it would have been desirable and most of the investment that is going it is going in the field of lithium ion battery the most notable one is the company tesla but even tesla elon musk is focusing on aluminum air but it is at a very nascent stage so we need to attract more technology and in this case india can play a lead role and it is playing when we talk about the indian oil deal that has taken place or the role of maruti and other companies so if they develop a product then other countries will have no choice other companies to invest more in this technology so this is definitely a positive especially in the terms of green and electronic electric mobility so this is all i have in this video thank you for streaming in bye bye take care and please do remember to like share and subscribe to our videos and your comments are highly appreciated bye bye take care and all the best for your exam